Whether or not you believe there actually is a competitive magic scene doesn't really matter. There is a higher level of play beyond your casual commander games and your LGS events. There are the 1Ks, the 5Ks, the GPs, the qualifiers, everything in between, and the integrity of all of these events, even your casual games, are important. When your opponent tries to play a card that results in an ETB and maybe it doesn't do that, you'll catch them. You'll say, hey, no, you don't get that effect. And to me, that's just as equal as an opponent at a higher level event, like maybe like a 5K or a big qualifier, taking advantage of you and maybe manipulating the cards that are going in their deck. And recently over this past weekend, we had a judge call, a ruling on a, in my opinion, a rather clear cheating event. And it just kind of took the MTG Twitter scene by storm. And I wanted to go over it today, provide some thoughts, provide some rulings and, and just go over the whole situation itself and talk about how the integrity of magic is relatively, <laughs> relatively important and should be to the majority of you, regardless of how casual you are. So going over the history of cheating, there are plenty of cheaters out there that have been stopped caught on camera and everything. And this is why coverage is really important at these higher level events. You have someone like uh, Alex Bertaccini, who uh, did an interview with Humans of Magic, where they talk about their history of suspensions throughout the years and ultimately resulting in a lifetime ban. Uh, there's a video from Nikachu. I'm going to link that down below as well. So that article and all this stuff, it's going to be all linked down below where Nikachu sees that on camera, they're highlighting the fact that uh, they actually take a creature and they all like they like put it in their hand uh, when it gets destroyed instead of putting it in their graveyard there also was some other cheats where they're drawing multiple cards instead of like uh, a limited few uh, based on what they're drawing so these type of things have been caught and this person has been banned so the appropriate measures have been taken and we're going to go over what qualifies cheating as well but before we do that i want to go over the situation in specific this happened over uh, the past weekend at the legacy european tour and what I want to focus you on to is Marco Lazaretti on the left side here uh, underneath the regional qualifier uh, portion on the top half here. So I'm going to I'm going to provide a full screen here. Not going to provide the audio because that's not important. What you're going to notice here, there's a polluted delta on Marco's side. They are going to crack that polluted delta and look through their library. Right. So that, that's where we're going to start things off in this clip. Uh, so they're looking for an expedition map on the right side from uh, from Piotr um, Canister. I should say, and um, now they're gonna pass. So at end step, they're gonna crack that polluted delta. And what I want you to focus on is what they're searching for, what uh, Marco's searching for. So immediately here, oh, what was that? That was a grief. That was a grief that they took out, not a land. That's grief. Grief's not grief's not a island or a swamp. Why did they separate that? Now they're looking through. They're looking through. They're looking through. Okay, they grabbed the grief again and they put it on top of their deck they grab the grief again intentionally two times they've demonstrated that intentionally they've seen the grief and they're manipulating at the top of their deck okay that's fine you're searching your deck right you're gonna keep looking through ultimately they find the godless shrine that they're looking for right up top and now notice the grief is still on top they're gonna shuffle a couple times how about we look at where the grief goes oh still on top shuffle still on top still on top oh still on top you get my point. Ultimately here, the grief stays on top and it was clearly intentionally put up there. They present their deck to cut and uh, they were cut here. So essentially what folks are saying, the cheat was like it, it, it was like removed, right? Like it was it was it wasn't caught, right? Or in the sense that it was abated. It was solved. We cut the deck. The deck was presented for cuts. You have to present your deck for cuts, right? If you're unaware, maybe you only play at the LGS and your opponent tells you to keep all the time or whatever. You're playing casually in a competitive constructed event and you, you search your deck. You have to present your deck for cuts so that you and your opponent equally have a chance to uh, like legitimately randomize your deck. And so in this case, the grief was put away. Uh, Cancer cut the deck and put it away, which is great. But that also doesn't change the fact that ultimately this cheat was not caught. And so going over the rules on sporting conduct and cheating, saying that underneath the uh, MTG judge rules resource, a person breaks rules defined by the tournament uh, documents, lies to a tournament official or notices an offense committed uh, in their match and does not call attention to it. Uh, that's essentially what cheating is. Additionally, the offense must meet the following criteria to be considered cheating. The player must be attempting to gain advantage from their action. So that's something that we're going to discuss in a second as well, whether or not a grief in that situation would have provided them with an advantage. The player must be aware 
that they're doing something illegal. So they must intentionally do it. They must have intent. And I was kind of pointing out the fact that they did manipulate that grief twice. They didn't, they, they, they separated it once and put it on top again. We're gonna go through some of the arguments that people are, uh, are kind of providing here. And if all these criteria are not met, then it's not cheating. It's gonna handle it, be handled in a different way. So this was caught on camera. People are gonna call this out. It's very strange, very sus. Um, and, it's, and it's good that we have coverage so that people can catch this. Now, if we look through a couple tweets, there's, there's a whole bunch. I'm gonna take out like uh, Saffron Olive's tweet here. It's hard to say for certain if someone is cheating or not, but there's certainly some funky shuffling going on here. What is a realistic non-cheating explanation for shuffling this way? If we scroll down, uh, people are saying, you know, all, all shuffling must be done with cards face down as per rules. People are saying like unclumping right so maybe there's a couple griefs together and like they were just trying to separate the grief and then they were going to shuffle after and then uh people are talking about you know the, it needs more context and um you know kind of adding new cards and it just like looking at like better ways to randomize right and so that's primarily the arguments being provided a lot of folks are generally saying that this is cheating if we go to the replies of this tweet again i'm going to be linking these tweets down below so you have the history of them Really, what folks are saying at large is that if you watch them again, top card never changes. If canister um, wasn't uh, cutting, they would draw grief, right? If they weren't waiting to cut, this is a bad ruling. This is a common cheat, right? The head just concluded that the player did not commit cheating here. And that's ultimately the ruling. Um, a lot of folks are saying this is sloppy. And some of the rules are like they did not want to draw grief, right? In that situation, if we go back, to the video they did not want to draw grief here so if we look at this board state right now here in this case against amulet titan what would that grief had done for them that's really the question here what would that grief have done for them they already have an active grief here but ultimately it doesn't matter right it's all about the intent to do so that's the ultimate argument and here they're talking about okay so one of the well, someone replied to todd anderson's suite and i think this this little thread here is really important Please watch it again. It's a bad ruling. Uh, Matthew Johnson says, hey, Todd, I looked at some of the details. And I think it's fairly reasonable argument here not to DQ in this particular board state. They didn't want to draw grief. OK, so in this case, they talk about, you know, isn't grief the best card they can draw here, assuming they have another black card in hand. I looked into this in the amulet discord. So there's a lot of conversation there. Their opinion is that because they were holding ephemerate with an untapped white and grief in play, it's actually one of the worst. So the player who put grief on top had an ephemerate. They could have ephemerated the grief that they have uh, analysis on that basis. Um, that would change uh, the ruling ruling based on whatever this is instead of the physical action is wrong, which is correct. Board state in this case doesn't necessarily matter. It's the intent, right? Because maybe the player themselves made a judgment call that grief was correct. It doesn't matter what we think is correct. The player themselves could have intentionally made a decision to put grief on top based on their own understanding of the game state and what their call was. And so ultimately, that could be cheating differently. Currently, policy requires breaking a rule, probably here. Intent to gain advantage, which we talked about. 100% not clear, but again, this could have been a call made on the player's part to gain advantage and knowledge of being illegal, which this is the hardest to gauge, correct. But in my opinion, they did manipulate the cards twice. They grabbed it initially. They put it back on top. I think that shows some level of intent here. Um, if you're making this ruling, please consult with some higher level judges. Uh, malicious and, me and mechanical, to be clear, I'm not at that tournament, not involved in the ruling. Um, and they're just kind of providing some theory back and forth. So yes, exactly. They're not trying to overrule. They're just trying to play some devil's advocate, which is perfectly fine. You're allowed to have kind of these type of discussions. And I guess ultimately what I want to do is provide my thoughts here. Was this cheating? In my opinion, yes. I think there was intent. I think there was some level of advantage to be gained um, in just getting out another creature for, you know, having another threat to potentially stop and stop out in terms of the top deck based on how you draw. And I think like just having that done intentionally and keeping it at the top, it's a very intentional cheat. Of course, you can present it for cuts, but even though it was cut in a lot of situations, especially like at an LGS or something, this is a very good example of sometimes you don't want to just let that person go and keep that card on top of their deck. Right. You want to take that deck, cut it a couple of times, maybe like create like some pile shuffling and then keep going, especially at a competitive event. Maybe not an LGS. You just kind of cut it once or twice or whatever. You're fine. But at a competitive event, 
Don't let them weave their mana here. Shuffle it continuously. Cut, cut, shuffle, pile, whatever. Provide reasonable randomization, especially in these clutch moments, in these early situations where your opponent has a lot to gain based on what they could be putting on top of their library. Ultimately, I think this wasn't the right call. I think this should have been some type of disqualification. And ultimately, even if they did make a mistake, these are things that folks have to be thinking of in a competitive environment. If you're going to be playing at these high level tournaments and making sloppy moves like this, you shouldn't be playing at all. These are mistakes that you need to learn from. Even if it wasn't intentional, it's fine. You just don't do it the next time. And you learn and you realize things like this aren't appropriate for high level magic. They're not really appropriate at any stage. But if it's a mistake, you can't be mistake making mistakes here. A lot of folks are trying their best. They're putting their time and effort and they don't want their time and effort being wasted by cheaters or uh, just sloppy mistakes that provide real serious advantages regardless of board state but let me know what you think in the comment section down below was this an example of cheating in your uh, in your mind do you think the the ruling was correct do you see intent let me know in the comment section down below and uh, i'd love to hear your thoughts